I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. And a huge shout out to my new channel members and Patreon supporters, Jet Simon, Basic Terror, Enmark Games, Zan, Fuzel CC, James Welch, Olivia Bernier, Tor Alexanderson, Matt, Fam Van, Amari Lewis, Seth Coble, and Retro Galaxy. Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry it's been a few days. Um, I've had a few things on the plate. Uh, obviously GDKO is uh, nearing the end of round one. Uh, Xander Jam is around the corner. Um, I've got a few Fiverr gigs on the go. Yes, I do Fiverr gigs now. It's something new I set up thinking this will be a fun way to make money. And then it turned out that I'm also sacrificing a whole bunch of my time, which is at a premium. But nevertheless, enough about my problems. Let's crack on with the next installment of Remake Castlevania. And in today's episode, we are going to create the boss room. So at the end of the level here, at the moment, as it stands, we walk off uh, the screen and we fall off the edge to our death that you won't see because the camera doesn't follow us that far. So what we're going to need to do is create a trigger zone here that when we enter this zone, we do a nice little transition into layout number two. So let's go ahead and create a sprite. So we could probably just reuse something that we've used before, I think. Uh, we've got the enemy fade there, which we've got the wolf going into, ghoul trigger. Um, cam zone no let's just create a new trigger just so we don't confuse anything so let's go ahead in the objects layer double click uh, this can just be a tile background and we're going to color this one green green is go make it 16 by 16 keep it nice and small and then we've got snap to grid on i'm going to change that to grid size 4 by 4 show grid you don't need to do that i just like to do it it helps me align everything. Um, I'm going to change the opacity to 50% because that helps me identify visually that things are triggers. And I'm going to set the initial visibility to not visible. Uh, everything else can remain exactly the same. And it's just going to sit there on the end of the level. We do need to give it a new name. Let's call it Level Transition. Now, let's go back to the player events and we're going to go ahead and create another group because I like to keep everything organized. And this one is going to be called Exit Level. Uh, very simply, first thing we need to do is check a collision. So we need to find out whether the player or specifically the player's base is overlapping another object. In fact, uh, instead of overlapping, let's just do on collision with. So the moment we touch it. Um, and we're going to pick the level transition. So all we've got here is saying when the player base touches the level transition trigger, what do we want to happen? Well, we need to go to level two. So let's create level two. So right click on layout, add layout. And I'm just going to say add, uh, let's add an event sheet with it, actually. So we can just leave the name to layer two layout too you can change that to whatever you want over on the left hand side here in properties we can see that it's currently linked to event sheet one which is this one over here we haven't named this one yet but what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this one to boss events because that's where i'm going to keep all of my logic for the boss fight which will effectively be this room here um, i'm going to i'm going to change the size of this just so it's the size of the roof the the viewport so it's going to be a one room uh, fight there isn't going to be a camera you're just going to be able to fight this thing in the one room so i want to go ahead and change the size to 320 by 180 um, and let's just put something in there so when we go there we've got something to look at so i'm going to scroll down i'm going to find my background stones i just resize this it was quite big for level one I'm going to pop that over there on layer zero. Then I'm going to right click. I'm going to add a new layer above that. Um, I'm going to call this one objects. <clears throat> Let's now put in the ground. Drag that onto the objects layer. This one still has the solid of um, 
the solid behavior. Uh, I can just change the size of it up here, the width to 180. Uh, so I know 320 height. Yep, yeah, 20. Fine. Let's get snap to grid on and change the grid size to 8 by 8. And there we go. Perfect. So we've got a level two, which is basically just a blank cave with a floor. We're going to have some little platforms that we can jump on as well. And then there's going to be a big bat that hangs off the ceiling and then basically flies around and tries to kill us through some various boss mechanics, which we'll create over the next couple of episodes. So let's go back to our player events now. So on collision with level transition, we can simply just go add action system and then we can say go to layout layout two. But this is going to be very boring. Um, so let me just show you what this looks like. You can probably imagine it's just going to be a straight cut to level two. And there we go. And it looks very, very, very dull. So we're going to need a nice transition effect. So let's go ahead and make a kind of closing door effect. So if we go back to layer one, we're going to need to put this on a global variable. You can see, um, in fact, we're going to need to put the HUD. We're going to make the HUD global as well. So when you make something global, it, it basically will show up everywhere in the game as long as that layer exists. But it has to be spelt correctly. So let me just show you what I mean. Let's make the HUD first of all global so you can see we've got the hud layer here in capitals hud if we go over to the layer properties you've got the name initially visible and then down here it says global no so we say global yes if we just leave it like that nothing's going to happen but if we go to layout two and we right click and we add a new layer above as long as we spell it exactly the same you can see that it just pops in there straight away and it's just going to show that from layout one you can't edit anything on here because this one is this layer is overridden. So if you want to edit it, you've got to go back to layout one, but it will show it there at the top of the screen, which is exactly what we want. And it keeps all the same uh, properties. Now we're going to need to create a fade layer. So go back to layout one. I'm going to put this on top of the HUD layer because it's going to be overlapping the screen and I'm going to call it fade. And I like to put all my global layers in capitals so I know that they're global. You don't have to do that, but it's just a, a visual way for me to be able to see what's happening. Go back to layout two, right click, insert layer above. Let's call it fade again. And again, you can see that that's now overridden, but if we want to edit it, we've got to go back to layout one. We need to set the parallax on this one to zero and zero because it's just going to be relevant over the viewport, which will be this section of the screen here. Let's now double click on that layer and create a tile background. I'm going to change the size to 16 by 16 and I'm going to make it black. You could draw a pattern on it if you wanted to. In fact, let's let's get semi creative, get a line. I'm going to go slightly a lighter shade with a kind of brown on it. I'm going to go a line across the middle and then I'm going to come down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and draw another straight line. So now that when that tiles, it's going to look like it's got just some nice pinstripes on it. Um, and you can get as creative as you want with yours. Now, one thing to pay attention to with these, because these are going to be like our barn doors that slide in and slide out. So I'm going to have one on the left, which slides to the middle, and one on the right, which slides to the middle, which is kind of like door shutting and then opening again. So we need to make sure the image points are in the right place. So for this one, I'm going to rename it to uh, fade door left. And the image point needs to be in the top left and I'm going to right click and I'm going to clone it. And I'm going to change this one to fade door right. Now the image points in the top left. So let's go ahead over here to the properties and change the image point origin to the top right. Perfect. Now we can set these into position. Now we need them to be exactly half of the viewport, which is 180. So the width of these things needs to be 90.
Um, sorry, the height's 180, it's 320, so it would need to be 160. And then I can line them up perfectly over the viewport. If we play this now, we're not going to see anything. It's just going to be that lovely uh, tile pinstripe. And you can see they all line up because we put them in the same place and made them a tile background. Now, we need to add a behavior to these two things here. So let's go ahead and add a behavior to the left one. And this is going to be the tween behavior. Let's go ahead and add it to the right one. And this is also going to be the tween. <clears throat> Now, when the level starts, they're going to be shut and then they're going to open. So we're going to need to create two functions, one function which opens the doors and one function which closes the doors. So let's go ahead and click on the function event, right click and add a function. And this one is going to be open. Open bay door. Now, what do we want to happen when we open the fade door? Well, the first thing we need to do is tween this thing off to this position here. So make a note of the X position using this origin point. At the moment, the position is at 320. If I move this all the way to the outer part of the viewport, the X position is now at 480. So we're going to need to tween that X position to 480. So let's go back to functions on fade door open. We're going to add an action and we're going to say fade door right. And we are going to tween one property. That's going to be the X position and the X position is going to be 480. It's going to take 0.5 seconds to do that. Let me just check. It was 480. It was 480. Now, if we're going to tween the left one, that position now is going to be minus 160. So let's go ahead and add that in. So fade door left. Tween one property X to minus 160 and over 0 0.5 seconds. Now, when we play the game, we need to call those functions. So if we go back to player events and go to setup, uh, we're going to need an on start of layout. Do we have one of those already? No, let's add it in under setup. So system on start of layout. I'm going to drag that to the top. Oh. And I'm going to then just call the fade open fade door function now when we preview the project there we go our fade opens now we need to create the close and we can just simply copy this one so i'm going to go ahead and uh, i'm going to go ahead and push control c control v and i'm going to double click and i'm going to call this one fade door close and then all we're going to do is reverse these back to their original position. So 320 over 0.5 seconds and zero over 0.5 seconds. Now, when we go back to our player events on level exit, instead of going straight to level two, let's go ahead and call the closed door function. Um, open fade close. <laughs> That's what I called it. Open fade door. I need to change the name of that. Why didn't you guys tell me? Close, fade, door. So let's go ahead and call that function now. Close, fade, door. Now, remember that function takes 0 0.5 seconds to play out. So we're going to need to add in a system and a wait. We're going to add a wait for 0 0.5 seconds. Let the fade door finish its animation, and then we're going to go to layout two. Now on layout two, we've got this fade layer. So you can see the doors are shut as we enter layout two. So let's go to our boss events, which is going to be linked to that layout. Add our first event, and we're going to say system, and say on start a layout, and let's just go ahead and call that open door function. Now let's give it a try. So go through the door at the end. Remember the, the fade trigger is invisible. As soon as I hit it, 
there we go we've transitioned nicely into level two um, i'm going to leave it there for the video um, i just wanted to get that transition done in the next episode we're going to start building the boss we're going to create a nice bat that's going to hang off the ceiling here and then we're going to come into the level we're going to spawn in the player and then we are going to start putting in some boss fight mechanics so Hopefully I'll see you in the next episode if you made it this far. Thanks for sticking around. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or if you're finding any of the content on the channel useful, please go ahead and click the thumbs up button. It does help put the video out to more people and help grow the channel. So if you're enjoying the series, you're enjoying the content and you want to see more of these types of tutorial series, any more easy game mechanics or any more content for me in general, then go ahead and spread the good word by clicking that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already done so, feel free to subscribe. You can unsubscribe at any time and uh, it would really help out the channel. I appreciate it very much. So take care, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.